Okay, real quick, do you know what time it is right now? How about what time it is in London or Sydney or good old, we don't change our clocks for nobody, Arizona. Well, time zones can get complicated. And if you're wondering what time it is on the moon, that is a very good question with a very complicated answer. Turns out the moon doesn't have its own time zone just yet, but the European Space Agency wants to change that. Joining us now is someone who knows all about space time, former astronaut Mike Massimino, who is now the senior advisor at the Intrepid Museum. Hi, Mike. Uh, let's start at the very beginning. What is time? Just kidding, but kind of <laughs> not really. Isn't, isn't yeah. time a, a measurement uh, that we use here based on the sun and the day and the night and stuff? Like, what is time when we're measuring it here on Earth versus the moon? Yeah, and Gotti, thanks for having me. I really kind of, I kind of like this topic because it's interesting. <laughs> um, for me, anyway, as an astronaut, really what time is, as far as the space program goes, astronauts and the people in the control center, it's just a way to measure what needs to be done next, really. At what time are we going to rendezvous? At what time are we going to do our spacewalks? At what time are we going to bed? At what time are we doing this experiment? And you really follow the plan, the timeline, really closely. So time, for me as an astronaut, was when do I do what next? What is the right time to do this next thing? How much time do I have to the next event? And that's what it really is for, uh, for astronauts in space, particularly when we were orbiting around the planet like my friends are doing right now in the space station, you're going around the planet every 90 minutes. To go across <laughs> right. country from California to, to, to Florida takes about 11 minutes. So you're gonna be resetting that watch all the time. So we used to go by <laughs> mission elapsed time on the space shuttle to know what to do when. And here on Earth, we do have universal time, right? And yeah. universal, you got space already in the name there. Wouldn't it be easier yeah. to just use that? We, we do, actually. So for the space shuttle, we would use, Gotti, we'd use mission elapsed time, which meant it started as soon as you launched. So one second after launch was mission elapsed time, one second, and then you would go for how many hours? 24 hours, and then it was one day. But on the space station, because it was controlled with control centers around the world, uh, in Houston, in Moscow, in Japan, in Europe, because of that, they decided to have one time zone that would be for, for the space station, and that is universal time. So the space station is on universal time. And Mike, uh, this part is probably gonna break my brain, so take it easy on me, but I was, I was reading that time itself yeah. moves differently on the moon. Clocks somehow gain roughly like 56 microseconds every day. What yeah. the what? Yeah, that's not very much. I wouldn't worry about that so much. That's really not very much time. <laughs> But what it is, it's just that because the gravitational attraction of the moon is one-sixth the gravitational force we have on Earth, that means that clocks will run differently. But the way we get around that, and in fact, there's something in orbit around the moon, the clock will operate a little bit differently than the one on the moon versus the one on a clock on Earth. But we can synchronize that stuff. So that's what we do, for example, on the space station, is we are constantly synchronizing clocks. They just need to make a decision of what they want to do <laughs> on the moon, and I, I get the hunch that the Europeans may have one opinion and the Americans might have another, so we'll see how it turns out. But yeah, you're right. If you're really, really exact about it, there is a slight difference in the way a clock will work, but you can sync those up so you're not late for anything. <laughs> and we, we just showed a graphic that was also really interesting. It was, I think, one lunar day. Wait, no. Yeah. 20, one lunar day is 29 Earth days, uh, and that's because of the, the rotation and the gravitational yeah. lock, is that right? It's just, a, it's just how long it takes for a, a, you know, one rotation to be made. Like we, are, we measure a day for one, rota uh, one of our, uh, one of our a rotation of the Earth completely, a complete rotation, and that's the, 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 Earth, the moon relative to us is is rotating at the, at the same uh, speed that it's following us. So that's why, if you look at a one day where you consider like a, a sunrise and a sunset, a one rotation of the planet, it's longer for the moon. But that, you know, we're not gonna go by that. I don't think anyone wants to go with a 29 day. No. I'd be shocked <laughs> if they go with the lunar day because the thing is, it's not just the astronauts on the moon, it's the control centers on the ground. And that needs to be in sync. You need to be in lockstep with these different control centers for the space station around the planet and maybe for the moon as well, there'll be control centers all over the place. So I think we're gonna be working on some sort of 24 hour clock and whether it's <laughs> Greenwich Mean Time or Houston time or whatever they come up with, I, I don't think we're gonna go with that 29 and a half day time. That's too complicated. <laughs> 
I don't know, Mike. I have a little one at home, and a 29-day nap sounds like so delicious right now. <laughs> yeah, that kid would have a lot of energy, though, for the, when he woke yeah. up. Yeah. Mike, thanks so very much for joining us. <laughs> my, my pleasure, Gotti. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.